Hey everybody, very casual video today. I'm just going to be getting ready using some relatively new makeup products and tools and uh, I'll see you at the end. Now the House of Shiseido has several of these really good high SPF BBs, meaning they're kind of like super loaded, skincare loaded, sun protection loaded, tinted moisturizers with actually buildable, medium-ish coverage. You have Anessa, the drugstore range, you have the BB for Sport from Shiseido, and then you have the really high-end Clédipur UV protective cream. Personally, between the three, I would pick up the Anessa first and foremost, not just because it is the cheapest option, but because the quality is really, really good. The Shiseido BB4 Sport is pretty popular in the luxury category. It is extremely sweat and oil resistant, so hence the name BB4 Sport. When it comes into contact with moisture, this formula actually clings better to your skin. The only reason I wouldn't pick this over the other two is because it has only a PA3 plus rating, meaning it will not protect you from the full spectrum of UVA rays. And those are the aging, collagen damaging rays which can get into your house, through your windows, through your blinds. I would only suggest wearing this if you are wearing a separate high PA plus sunscreen beneath it. The Anessa BB has its own problems. It comes in only two shades. I'm between the two and I own both so that I can go between or mix both of them. Now, if you're wondering about the compact version of these, again, they only have a PA3 plus rating. So to me, it's kind of neither here nor there. It's not a great sun protection. It's not complete sun protection. At the same time, I've got better makeup products. I don't want an in-between that does neither thing especially well, so... Either way though, unless you're really slathering this on, it's probably better to wear a separate sunscreen underneath anyway because the amount of this you would need to apply to get the full sun protection rating would be really, really high. If you're just using this as a makeup product and the extra sun protection is just a bonus, then go right ahead. It's a beautiful formula. It's very much like um, Chanel's Vita Lumia Aqua. It's got that really light, silky consistency that is very weightless on skin. Uh, it doesn't add shine. It doesn't make you overly matte looking either. So I find it a very, very comfortable texture to wear on a daily basis. I do have a whole bunch of Nude Sticks Nude Fix Concealers. You can technically use it to sculpt, highlight, reshape your face the way you would with Tarte Shape Tape. However, I have tried it a couple of times and the coverage level is pretty low. So if you're expecting full spot coverage, this probably would not be the best formula. This is really silky, but the coverage level is what I would describe as um, OG Touche Cla, if you know what I mean. It can brighten, it can even out your skin tone, but it's not going to camouflage heavy flaws. Now, I'm using shade 3, I'm going to tap on a little bit of shade 2 for extra brightening. It is very blendable though, so if you're the type that just wants to swipe on something really, really blendable, smear it out and leave the house, then this would be for you. Before I go any further, a little bit of lip balm. This is my um, Estee Lauder Pure Color Envy Color Reviving Balm. I think that's what it's called. Um, every time I have this on during my Instagram get ready video, someone will ask, what lip color are you wearing? I'm not wearing lip color. It's just this color reviving balm. It's Estee Lauder's version of Dior's lip glow and I think the color is just a little bit more subtle. So if you have um, medium to deeper skin tone, I would probably go with the Dior lip glow. But if you're on the light to fair side and you want subtle color that doesn't look like makeup, then the Estee Lauder is beautiful. 
Barteri has a new Hyaluronic Pressed Hydra Powder and like the loose powder version, this is supposed to go on, uh, well it sets your makeup but at the same time it contains all those hyaluronic acid particles or sodium hyaluronic, not hyaluronic acid, which is supposed to grab water so it should technically help to sort of plump out some of the fine dry lines in those zones where you know we hate to apply too much setting powder. Oh, I'm just testing some of the Juno sponges as well. Let's just say I like this more for powder application than for liquids and creams. I've used the loose version of this, but I find that one sometimes will grab and darken in a very strange way on some concealers or foundations when I'm trying to set my makeup. I don't have that problem with the pressed version and I do feel that it's not quite as creasy or heavy looking around the under eye area, so this is definitely my pick out of the two. A bronzer, and I have one of the gorgeous new bronzing powders from NARS. This is the shade Velata, and it's a gorgeous, dusky, dusty, sort of a taupe bronze. Now, this is beautiful, tawny matte shade. It's got some bronze, it's got a little bit of a red warmth as well, if you want to use it over your cheeks to make yourself look a little bit more tan. It also has just a teeny tiny bit of grey in it as well, which makes it quite nice for shaping the face if you have light to pale skin. If I put it beside the Kevin Aucoin Medium Sculpting Powder, you can see that this one is way more grey. So if you really want to chisel your cheeks and jawline and everything, this would be the way to go. But if you want to do subtle shaping and you don't want a very harsh or very very contoured look, this would actually be really nice for lighter skins. I'm not going to do a really sculpted look, I just want some dimension to my cheeks and my facial features so I'm going to use a really big fat fluffy brush. This one is a 13 Rushes Brushes Luxe Powder Brush. Now, I wouldn't say to use a small little brush and go to town with a shade like this because the colour would be completely off, you'd end up with a red-brown stripe. Not nice. Of course, if you have a medium tan skin, I would say stick with the traditional Laguna shade because that one's a little bit more warm and caramelly and that's only if you want the same subtle shaping effect. Of course, with deeper skins, go with Casino. Never mind, she declined to the first day. It was only on my birthday. Now cheeks, I think I'm going to do a cream blush today and this is not new, it's one of the half caked candy paints but I ordered it a while ago and I never ever swatched or reviewed it and I really quite like the texture. Now this shade that you're looking at is called Velvet Tiger and the reason I really like it is because it reminds me quite a lot, it's pretty close to Fenty Beauty's Rosé Latte which is one of my favourite cream blush shades of all time. Now half caked is a US based company so you do have to factor in shipping if you are buying this from outside of the US. Now the half caked formula is more emollient than Fenty so if you have very very oily skin or a lot of blemishes and texture on your cheeks, stick with the Fenty. Now always go slightly higher because a higher cheek flush actually lifts your cheekbones visually. It's an optical illusion. Also, you do want the creaminess to catch the light every time you turn your face. Now I have two of the NARS Power Chrome pigments which I have not tried yet. Now Shockham is this pale champagne bone shade and then Stricken is this rich chocolatey bronze. Feeling like more of a smoky eye today so I'm gonna go with Stricken first. 
This is just my usual black kajal which I got online. I used to order them direct from India. That's the real stuff. It should be really gentle on your eyes. It's very soft and creamy. The stuff that I see these days online are all counterfeit products from China and they're really stiff. They are not creamy. They don't glide on the same way. So you just stick with NYX Black Bean. Uh, this kind of texture probably goes on great using a finger, so I'm just gonna look at how beautiful that is. So I'm gonna use my fingers to pack this on and then use a brush just to blend out the edges. Oh. Out though, just be careful with this one. I guess that things can only get better from here, but sometimes I wonder I might have met the love of my life. But I lost a number, never mind. She declined to the first date. I went to Vegas with a roommate, never mind. All the lines on the highway, I aim to misbehave. Shockum is very gritty and chunky, so I'm kind of afraid of it. Look at that. The flecks are really large, so they have a tendency sometimes to go on patchy. Of course, it's kind of beautiful from a distance. Morning. Never mind, she declined to the first day. It was only on my birthday. Never mind all the lines on the highway. Give me time to reflect a bit. I'm gonna try something strange today. I'm a huge fan of Kabuki makeup, Geisha Michael makeup, and I was on eBay googling around. So, as you do, I was kind of just led to some eBay sellers who supply Kabuki theater makeup supplies, and I ordered myself a pot of this. If you've not heard of Kabuki Abura, this is just the kind of wax primer or base that Kabuki theater actors and geisha use, you know, before they apply their white makeup. They also use a form of this to flatten their brows, so this is what I'm doing today. And dang, does it work! So as with all these brow soaping or waxing techniques, because we're not doing drag makeup or crown makeup, you do want to fill in gaps in your brows and then use the wax as a last step to set the brow hairs in place. I know some people like it all going straight up parallel. I just feel it makes the face look really harsh and quite fierce, so I like to just sort of lightly comb downwards after the arch. Now you want to make sure that the false lashes only go on the base of your natural lashes. So just along the waterline, you do not ever want them to touch your eye. And there you have it. You shouldn't feel anything. It should just look like you have really nice lashes. Almost done. Now I'm not going to do too much to my lips. I just want to intensify the flush a little bit barely their colour, so I'm going to be using one of my favourite transforming lip balm type products and that is Lipstick Queen's Morning Sunshine. Now it looks like a clear yellow balm, but this is one of those colour changing lipsticks that reacts to acidity on your skin. Always go on with just the tiniest amount first, let it change, let it intensify and then see if you want to add more. Because if you go like this right from the start, you're going to end up with bright coral lips and that's not what I'm going for today. I'm gonna stop right there. So that's it, fresh quick. You can obviously skip the brow waxing and the lashes below your waterline. Other than those two steps, this was quite a fuss-free look. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys in the next video. Never mind all the lines on the highway.